Hey guys, Arcade Adam back with another video, and this one's going to be the light gun video that everybody's been waiting for, or bugging me for, either way, pick, pick your poison. Anyway, part two, and yes, that means we didn't get there in this one, but we discovered a lot of things, and we made a lot of progress, and I think I'm almost there i just need some time to really focus on it for a couple more hours and i think i got this because well you'll see in the video it's uh <laughs> it speaks for itself this is my first time opening up the gun since i got my brand new xbox controller official rumble motors that's what those little round motors are in the upper left of your screen there um they are the actual motors in an xbox i believe just an xbox one controller the 360 is a little different uh, they run on 3.3 volts. They take 0 0.018 amps, so not a lot of power. Um, oh, check that out. <laughs> Look at the other side of that plastic. There is a burn mark in there from my solenoid because, like I said in some places online, if you guys follow me in other social media channels, I juice the heck out of these guns. Uh, they run on a, the solenoid runs on a range of 24 volts to 36 volts and of course I bought a 300 watt power supply uh, to run my two guns and you'll see I got kind of excited there because there's this big wide open space the rumble motor fits right in the nose of the gun so that's uh, that's nice but also um, for weight distribution reasons probably not the most optimal place Plus, I think that's probably a good place for the select fire switch. So we'll see if that's where we, its final resting place will be. But basically, the goal in this video is to find a place for that motor, to find a place for our voltage step-down converter, and to find a place for our switch. And then wire it all together and test it. Because if you can get this thing working before you close it up, you can then go back and make your wire run shorter, you know, maybe print some mounts on my new 3D printer and uh, clean things up in general. Because like I said, I hate when these things rattle around. It's the whole reason why I have that bracket around my solenoid so they don't bounce around on the inside of the gun. So we don't want to create problems that we've already solved. So uh, come with me on this journey. I'm just going to keep poking around and try to test fit stuff. Um, as you can see, the trigger is just a big plastic thing with a metal spring behind it that then pushes a very small um, momentary switch. So it's just that uh, little plastic clip up there that gives what gives it its nice bend so you can kind of hold it, hold it down and not break anything. Um, so I'm kind of wondering what I need to do is I need to use that momentary switch hopefully to turn on my vibration motor so we don't have to add another switch. Because if we have to add another switch it gets more complicated and there's a ton more wires and just don't want to go there. Um, so if we can break common ground or figure something out, make sure. Hopefully that's a regular, you know, single pole uh, switch that we can interrupt and use twice. But uh, that's for a little further down the line. You'll see what I'm talking about. And I'll um, I'll jump back in and try to explain things as we go along here. But just want to do the intro, show you what's going on the inside of these guns. If you've never seen them before, you know, you've got the buttons up front, independent, left and right. Uh, solenoid in the middle that's that blue thing and then the trigger mechanism like I said and then on the um, solenoid guns they've actually got two wires in that thick USB wire they've got the like I said earlier the 36 volts in and then the regular USB connection and it goes to that optical board which is in the top front part of that barrel um, but yeah enjoy guys I found some new music you think you guys Mike you guys really seem to enjoy the retro music I had in my other video so I'm gonna link the artist down below um, it's actually a whole bunch of different artists that I found. It's a really cool mix. Hope you guys like it. And uh, I'll jump back in when I have something else interesting to say.
Okay, me again. Um, wanted to explain what I'm doing here because there's a glare on my uh, multimeter, unfortunately. I uh, tried to get that in frame for you guys. But basically, this is a voltage step-down converter. So on the input, the left-hand side, that goes to the wall. There's a converter on it. It's feeding me, I think it was 24 volts, just to simulate being plugged into an arcade power supply. And then on the output side, I need 3.3 volts for the uh, Xbox controller motors. So I, you can see I dialed it down to 3 just for testing, just to make sure I don't blow things up. It's probably fine. Probably even rated, you know, it's rated for 3.3, but most electronics have plus or minus 10% built into them. So you could probably run the thing at 4 volts and get a little stronger yo out of your guns, at least. <laughs> I like to <laughs> push things to the limit a little bit, so we'll see. But anyway, just kind of setting up a test circuit here. Um, I'm going to plug in the motor for the first time and see if this rumble really is enough rumble. Because I'm, you know, the whole goal here is to be able to play these games where you're holding down the trigger and uh, you're not, you know, you only get that one click from the solenoid the way it is now. But with this, if you hold down the trigger, it's just going to constantly vibrate. And you can see it just took off in my helping hands there. And it was pretty, uh, pretty robust. It was actually bouncing the helping hands across the desk there. So... Um, actually go get a, if I remember right, I, I think I go get a crescent wrench <laughs> and kind of put it in a, a little bit of a tiny vice grip kind of situation just to hold it down while I'm testing it just because I want to see how powerful this thing is. And first test went well. So I think the gun's really going to feel good. Now, the only other thing we got to balance is if it's too powerful, it might bounce it out of your hands. I don't think we're going to get there with three volts, but hey, you never know industrious little fellows over in China can figure out some really amazing things. So I uh, just want to jump in and share that and I'll be back when uh, we get a little closer. again real quick just want to jump in uh, i think this deserves explanation so i'm putting this switch in the helping hands it's a three position switch the goal is uh solenoid on rumble off both off and then just uh new rumble motor on solenoid off so three it's kind of like select fire single single fire full auto off and what i'm doing is i'm putting my multimeter in continuity mode to see which uh, pins on the switch are which and which have continuity and which don't based on the switch position. Just wanted to explain that real quick. Keep going, keep going. 
Okay, guys, we're rounding the corner on something interesting again. So basically, what I was doing earlier with that little iPhone charger is creating a temporary USB power source. So that's emulating our gun power because you want to test on something you're okay with blowing up because, you know, I'm not an expert by any means. I just kind of tinker around and sometimes stuff blows up. So anyway, we don't test on the expensive gun. We test on the crappy iPhone charger that nobody cares about. So we twist our wires together, we get our motor in place, and we plug it into our iPhone charger, flip the switch, and <laughs> it shakes itself right out of there. So we need to need a little assistance, and we got the crescent wrench out, and we'll put that in there and uh, fire it up again. I'm just trying to make sure the wires that I twist together don't touch. Yeah, look at that. She's just she's taking that whole wrench. Is you know it's heavy. It's maybe a um, a pound, but it's vibrating it around the desk. So more than enough for me like i said there's a healthy balance between like too much to make your hand tired and like enough to really feel it so to each everybody's own but for me you know an xbox controller you know set to 11 basically is what we're doing here is a good amount of vibration look at it move that's perfect in my opinion so we're going to continue on we got that working so that's the easy part basically just powering the motor switching it on and off now we've got to integrate it back into the gun switch the solenoid part on and off and then make the motor fire only when the button is pressed so it's about to get complicated strap in <music>
right guys me again what we're around in the corner on doing here is we moved over to the gun we're grabbing USB power from the gun I know the original plan was to go ahead and grab the high power source for the solenoid but I thought hey this thing only needs 3.3 volts why go there if we don't have to so USB power in voltage converter down to 3.3 ish into the switch into the motor and uh, I've just plugged into a computer off camera uh, to simulate the full stack and before I turn it on I'm testing if I've got 5 volts at the source and then I'm gonna confirm that <laughs> cross your fingers and then hey look at that we've got a vibration motor powered by a regular old aim track light gun and nothing else so at this point it's kind of universal you could technically do this to a aim track light gun without a solenoid in it so you could have vibration only if that's your thing so just wanted to update you guys on that um i'll give you a quick teaser that what i just did there is going to come back to haunt me a little bit but we'll get into those details uh a little later on
right guys, I'm gonna jump back in here one last time and uh, explain what the heck I just did. So we went from the USB power uh, input on the board to the voltage converter and then now we're interrupting ground using that built-in trigger switch. So the whole idea was to use that switch the way it's used for the solenoid. So when that button is pressed, the solenoid fires. So we're gonna use that switch to also turn on our motor and it's gonna do double duty. So depending on which way the switch is uh, configured, you when know, you push forward or push backward, it'll either fire the solenoid or fire the vibration motor. Um, but what I didn't realize, and you saw me struggle with this, is those contact pads on the front didn't want to take any solder, so I couldn't get my wires on there. That's what I was struggling with uh, in the beginning there. So I flipped the board over and I soldered my contact points on the back, and you saw when I just tested it, the motor turned on, but that trigger switch wasn't pressed, and that's not what we want. We only want the motor to turn on when the trigger's pressed, not when it's not pressed. So. Uh, at this point, I'm struggling with that switch. I'm doing a continuity check with my multimeter to like sanity check. It's like, is this a weird switch? Is this something like special or goofy? Like, you know, it should just interrupt ground like a normal switch should. And that's what I thought I had. But what I didn't realize at the time, and the rest of this video is just me being on the struggle bus trying to figure out what the hell is going on. But I figured it out. I don't remember if I figured it out while I was doing this or just I kind of slept on it. But basically, because I pulled power from USB, that switch is breaking ground on my power source, so I'm creating a ground loop. So I'm pulling ground from that switch, and I'm also pulling ground over on the left from the USB at the same time, so I'm not interrupting anything. And <laughs> I was... <laughs> you saw my lights turn... I have automatic lights in my basement, so if I stand too still, <laughs> they kick off. But anyways, back to the original point that circuit's not going to work. I have to go back to my original plan. I have to grab the high power or high, not high power, high voltage uh, power input for my voltage regulator. Um, and then that'll work. I can use that switch because it'll be an independent circuit. It'll break ground uh, for both the solenoid and the motor, at least in my head it does. Uh, Cause I ran out of time. And uh, that's the end of this video guys. Please keep an eye out for part three, the conclusion of the vibration gun mount, motor mount, motor, but I can't even speak. <laughs> the conclusion of the aim track vibration motor fully automatic mod just in time for those Sindon light guns to come out and make this completely pointless. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one.